Omar Moalem is an Edmonton journalist and filmmaker who always had a dream of becoming a wrestler. He grew up in Alberta watching wrestling on TV, even having a fond memory as a child of going to a WWF event with his dad and his brother. In his new documentary film, Making Kayfabe, The Private Lives of Indie Wrestlers, Moalin goes deep into the wrestling world, putting himself through weeks of rigorous training, chasing his childhood dream of getting into the ring. Making Kayfabe is currently streaming on CBC Gem, and this morning, Omar joins me on Discovers to talk about the film. Good morning, Omar. Good morning. Wonderful to have you here on Discoveries on this beautiful Monday morning. There's... Wonderful to, to be here bringing the <laughs> the fine art of pro wrestling to, <laughs> to your fans, to your audience. Thank you. There's been many documentaries made about wrestling. Mm -hmm. what, what drove you to making kayfabe? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because there are. There's in fact, there's a, a documentary series that's really popular right now called Dark Side of the Ring, which is all about that sort of dark underbelly, that grimy side of wrestling that by now we're all familiar with, you know, like everyone else, I find them very compelling. I don't think it reflects the reality of the the lives and, and the motivations of most wrestlers because, yeah, you have the WWE and maybe a couple of other big league wrestling promotions, but the vast majority, I'm talking like the vast majority of wrestlers out there, they are fighting for the passion of it as a hobby. They're fighting at a, at a, at a local level, at your like local community hall or legion hall. And those are the people that I became really fascinated with. These are the people who moonlight as wrestlers. They transform into these these uh, over the top, you know, out of this world caricatures, you know, of of good and evil. And then the next morning they wake up and they go teach a grade one class, you know, <laughs> or they go into an office where they're policy analysts or data clerks. And these are real, real examples of the people you'll meet in my movie, by the way. Um, those are the people that I think really represent wrestling in its purity. And that's that's what I wanted to make a movie about. That is fantastic. Now, your initial idea for the film, from what I understand, was you're going to make a doc documentary on the history of Alberta wrestling, which we've gone through. We know there's Stampede Wrestling and a few others. But what was it that drove you to this world of indie wrestling? How did you find out about this part of wrestling? Mm -hmm. I've been vaguely aware of it for quite a while since living in, in Edmonton. Um, I moved here about uh, 18 years ago. And every once in a while, I'd see a poster here or there. But by then, I'd kind of fallen out of res wrestling. Like, my interest was was pretty much zero. But then I had kids. And in my neighborhood, there's a Legion Hall that would have wrestling a couple of times a month. And so I started to to take my kids there. And it just spark that old joy for me. In fact, I think it sparked more joy for me than it did for my kids. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, it's a, it's so much fun. It's campy, it's silly, but there's also like a, I think a sophistication behind it. And I became really fascinated by those, those regular people that, you know, that, that are moonlighting as wrestlers. So that's kind of how this movie started is that question. If they can do it, can I do it? Can, is, can anyone do this with the right training? And is it too late to fulfill that childhood dream of being a wrestler? What was the training like preparing you to enter the wrestling ring? Whew. It, the training was, it, it's probably like physically the hardest thing that I've ever done, but not in the way that I think people imagine, right? Like obviously it, it's, it's an athletic endeavor for sure. I mean, I was breaking a sweat <laughs> like I've never, everywhere I went, I was leaving puddles of sweat, really. But it's actually the physical intelligence that I found most uh, grueling and challenging. And by, by that, I mean, learning, understanding choreography, being able to act while performing as well, this choreography, and the memorization of, of the moves. So, you know, a match is actually, um, you break down a match into what are called spots. 
uh, several spots between wrestlers make a match. And then, but those spots are built between several sequences of moves. And so you have to memorize each move and then the sequence that you're going to do them in. And then you have to memorize <laughs> the different spots that kind of are the, the beats of the story that, that, that make up a match. And, that I found very challenging. You know, luckily I was in the hands of some very patient pros. Shout outs to them. Michael Richard Blaze, uh, Taryn from Accounting and T.Y. Jackson. And you'll see in the movie that they're actually kind of giving me stage directions throughout the match. Whether or not I memorized, you know, the script, they were making sure that I never missed a beat. And so you pick up a, on a little bit of that in the match. But without them, God, I would have been lost. Well, now that you have fulfilled your childhood dream, now that you have been in the ring as a pro, well, as a pro wrestler, quote unquote, <laughs> is this a career path that you would consider in the future? <laughs> um, no, I mean, despite the shaky state of journalism, uh, <laughs> I'm not ready to make a full transition uh, to the villainous journalist, fake news Neville, my my wrestling persona. No, um, it's not. It's not because I didn't love it. Obviously, I loved it. It's because the dedication that it takes, the commitment, um, even to fight at a local level is just it's more than I can. It's more than I can handle. It's more than I'm willing to give. I mean, just these regular people that you that you might see at your community hall, um, just know that they're probably in the gym like three, four, sometimes five days a week training, trying to get better, whether or not they want to go pro. This is just so that they can perform and entertain once a week, maybe every second week. And, and that level of dedication, I have so much respect for it. Um, but it's just not something I can do. Omar, thank you so much for joining me this morning in Discoveries and for sharing this part of the wrestling world with us that most of us would never have known about. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Leo Cripps, and my guest this morning on Discoveries is Edmonton journalist and filmmaker Omar Mualim. You can see his latest film, Making Kayfabe, The Private Lives of Indie Wrestlers. It is now streaming on CBC Gem.